All right, welcome everybody. My name is Sigurd Sochenbeet and this is the premium coaching live show here on Chess24, which is going to last 90 minutes, one and a half hours, and I'm going to go over the games of premium members who have sent me some games to analyze and I hope to give you good advice and give you some good practical tips to implement in your own games to improve your chess skills. All right, so I would say we go right ahead to the first game. And I have it right here. Is it just me or does the screen look a little bit strange today? Maybe it's because I'm wearing a striped shirt. Maybe that's a that's a crime uh, in the for the camera. I don't know. Well, I think it's not too bad. Not sure how much I like it though. All right, so let me see. I need to change something here. Yes, there we go. This looks better. All right, so the first game we have today, and of course you guys can let me know just to make sure that you can hear and see me in a chat. Uh, the first game we have today is by Kentering. And Kentering has won the prediction game for the Synchrofield Cup. For all of those who don't know, for pretty much every major tournament we have a prediction game. So you guys can put in the final standings um, as just a game and see how you, how you do compared to how it actually turns out. And Kentering did a pretty good job for the single field cup and won this spot in the show to have one of his games analyzed. All right, thanks for, to Don Martin and Seal for the feedback and let's get started. Hi Nicholas, I'm white in this game, quite a frustrating game where I came with a nice attack out of the opening but didn't manage to convert and even lost silly in the end game. I don't take all the uh, excitement out of it right from the start. Now we all know the course of the game, right? Well, I'm just joking here. Um, but... <laughs> On the other hand, it might be more fun to not know the outcome right from the start. But first of all, that's a great game to send in because the f most frustrating games is just so much to learn from, really. I like to emphasize this. You learn the most from your losses. Of course, wins are nice and we like to show wins. We're proud of wins. But in the end, what you can take away from the most are losses. So let's see. All right, so this is the perk. I don't like the four pawns attack, which is, I guess you mean the three pawns attack. Uh, with f4 here, feeling much too vulnerable behind the advanced pawns. This setup was for me an experiment, trying to make use of the spatial advantage and better development without taking too much risk. Yeah, I personally play f4 here, and knight f3 and bishop d3. Bishop d3, it's more aggressive, it's more direct. Of course, you grab more space. But it also has its downfalls. It's maybe a little bit riskier too. So bishop e3 is, is a very common approach here as well. Bishop g7 and bishop c4. Not advised by sf, but the reason that my bishop didn't have much to do with the black c6 and bishop uh, b5 setup in the diagonal a2 g8 seems to be promising, isn't it? Okay, I'm not sure what sf means. Anyway, here there are two typical approaches though. Usually you want to go queen d2 and queen side castle. It's very common. But this knight g4 is annoying. So white either plays h3 or f3. I think f3 is a more common move. So later you also have the option to go <clears throat> h4, g4. Let's draw some arrows here. And maybe have some attacking chance going on. So bishop c4 is a different approach, but here already be slightly annoyed maybe with the move knight g4. 
after which you need to retreat. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not too big of an issue, but um, I would certainly consider it. And Rogov is asking in the chat, when did the show start? I'm live already, Rogov, so I'm hope, I hope you can see me. And the chat also seems to work. Um, but as I'm saying this, I'm wondering why after Bishop E3 there might also be the same move. And I know this is not a problem in general. So maybe Knight G4 isn't an issue. You can just move the Bishop. But still I'd be slightly concerned this Knight G4 move. Because Bishop G5, the Bishop's just hit again. Yeah, maybe one can do something like this. Just go to h4. Anyway, bishop c4 is not the main move. That's all I know. I don't know how good or bad it is. All right, let's go ahead. And yeah, we're going to show just start at 5 p.m. Um, c6 a3 well here now you're running into d5 though so you want to move out of the way here with bishop b3 in general because here this is helpful for black after a3 black can play d5 and you won't maintain your strong center right um well if you take then obviously you don't have much so you could play bishop d3 back but now already you have spent this move a3, you have spent the move bishop c4, then bishop d3 back. This obviously is, hasn't gone great, right? So this is probably just equal. And after bishop b3, now black wouldn't play d5 because now you can just push e5. That's the difference, right? Black is not playing d5 with tempo. So this just a slight thing I notice here. So rather of preparing bishop a2. Of course the bishop is safe there, but the bishop is also pretty safe in b3. So just play bishop b3 right away. All right, castle, h3. Not so active, but preventing black's light pieces to go to g4. I didn't consider knight takes e4. Oh yeah, that's true. That's another factor. So you really want to get the bishop out of the way. And h3, you're still not finishing your development. One of the golden rules in the opening is to, well, develop. Develop your minor pieces, castle, right? Develop your minor pieces, castle, uh, fight for the center, bring your rooks into play, put the rooks in open files, connect the rooks first of all by moving the queen. Uh, you're making too many pawn moves here, I would say. I can see h3 makes sense to so stop knight g4, but it's not that much of a deal. You could also play knight f3 here. Um, and if knight g4, bishop g4, bishop g4, I wouldn't be worried about just h3. And knight g4, okay, well, you just moved the bishop somewhere. Right, and knight takes e4, yeah. Um, okay, well, this is just a normal position, not too much happening. Okay. So, I think you're making too many palmos and you want to really get your king into safety. Uh, knight bd7, lucky me, knight takes e4 would have cost me my precious bishop and the initiative. I wasn't looking at tactics at all, being absorbed by putting my piece in the right place and thinking in the start of the perk, black is doing the same. Moreover, I often lose much time in the opening by looking for tactical variations that don't work in the end, often because of a lack of development. Alright, so a couple of things I want to notice here. First off, I don't think you would lose your bishop pair here because of their takes, takes, d5, bishop, d3, or your bishop rather, well, or both, I should say. Here you can take on e4, but uh, yeah, maybe this, yeah. Maybe now it's already, you're already paying for not having developed, and black can do something anti-position, but it works because 
you're just not developed yet. You, the knight is still in g1 and do something like this. And you would just, yeah, just lose the pawn d4 here and would be just in a terrible position. So probably you're right, probably you can't do that and just have to do something else here. But all these lines, now it's telling that you've played h3 and a3 and those pawn moves, of course, can be helpful, but sometimes you just have to prioritize. And in the opening, it's so important to just bring out your minor pieces, bishops and knights, and then castle, and then, yeah, you can still think about useful pawn moves, especially the move a3 uh, was not helpful when you had the better alternative bishop b3 available, which also um, goes out, out of any d5 ideas, right? So here after d5, I guess you would need to play knight d2 maybe. But yeah, on all these lines already black with the lead in development is putting on pressure. And you're saying, I wasn't looking at uh, cost me, well, the initiative, you don't have the initiative at all anyway. And I think McCall is coming in maybe to fix the slightly unpleasant lighting. I think it's due to my striped uh, shirt, I'm not sure. Should we go and break real quick? All right, and we're back and now it looks better. So not sure what's going on there, but now the webcam picture is a little bit better. So where was I? I was talking about the golden opening rules and Rogoff is pointing out that there's a good series on it by Melanie Ulme. Back then she was Melanie Ulme, now she's Melanie Lube uh, in German. All right, so uh, I was saying, yeah, you didn't, uh, uh, you're saying that you have the initiative. Well, you don't have the initiative anyway here. This is just a normal opening. Um, so initiative is more like being active and creating threats, going maybe for a king attack. Um, but this is just a normal opening. Um, and then there are some other things I want to point out. I wasn't looking at tactics at all. Yeah, usually in the opening, there are not that many tactics, but you always have to look out for them, really, um, since chess is just so much tactic tactics. And yeah, you don't want to spend too much time in the opening because you just want to follow those golden rules, develop your pieces and fight for the center. Um, castle, yeah. I've, I've emphasized it now a couple of times. And just play natural moves. Occupy open files, half open files with your rooks. Things along this nature. All right, let's keep going. Queen d2. Mean plans on the king side. But I'm very much guessing that still knight takes e4 is possible here. So 
So still this idea, which is a very common idea. And I'm sure now that you've seen it <laughs> so many times here in this show, you will certainly remember it. Uh, this is also in other positions, very common tactical motive. All right, so yeah, I'm not sure if I like it. I'm not sure if you're going to castle queenside, but I don't think I would like it. So let's see how this develops. B5, bishop a3, a2. Now you're saying useful a3 move, but honestly, even if you go to b3 and black, okay, let's say your pawn is still on a2. And you, instead of playing a3, you've played some other moves. Um, even then you could still play a3 or even sometimes go a4, which isn't too bad either. And the bishop is also very useful on b3. All right, so bishop a2, e5, knight a3, bishop b2, knight g5. What was I thinking? Something like a5, d takes e4, uh, d takes e5, d takes e5, castle, and then after knight b6, the queens will be exchanged and then f7 is hanging. All right, so this is way too far ahead and way too um, unclear. So this is just not likely to happen. And do you know what the problem is here? Um, black can just play h6. Just a quick question by Dobiel Duende after move eight, whether white can go bishop takes f7. Yeah, absolutely, white can do that. But you still end up in this position where, yeah, black just has to has obtained the light square bishop from white, and okay, black's just completely fine here. Uh, bishop takes f7. Of course, you can do that. But even here, not much is happening. Black's just controlling everything with his light square bishop, and the white one is really missing here. So. Back to this position here, black can just play h6 and you don't want to take on f7. So you just need to retreat. Then king h7 and yeah, didn't help you. I mean, knight g5 is also not creating any threat as far as I can tell right now. Mm. So doesn't seem like a move that's doing a lot. All right, so e takes d4 is played. Bishop takes, knight e5, castle. All right, earlier I was saying, I'm not sure if you should castle queenside because it looks dangerous, especially since you have played a3 already, it allows black to attack you faster. Just imagine a pawn still being on a2. Then black would need much more time to open up files, but. But now black can just play a5, b4, and already either the a file or the b file will be opened up. Um, so this is risky. This is risky, but it might be possible. Um, the safer move here certainly would have been to castle kingside. And then go from there and then play rook a d1 and so on. It actually looks like you have, you have a nice position here. So double edge to go queen side. Just have, just have that in mind. That's more of a risky approach. Knight c4. Should I have taken this knight? It looked so dangerous with an open b file. Yeah, but this knight, to keep this knight on c4, to my mind, also looks pretty dangerous. And it's quite annoying. So you should definitely take this off. Uh, I would say, I'm pretty sure you take this off. And it will still take some time for black to do something on the b-file. Right now you have a nice bishop on d4. And here you could um, move the bishop out of the way to attack the pawn on d6. Let's say bishop e3 is interesting to threaten queen takes d6. And black is struggling already to defend this pawn. Maybe has to play d5. Maybe plays h6 first to just push this knight out of the way. But actually now you have a double attack going uh, here. So yeah, so d5 maybe, but then you can think about e5 followed by e6 and now suddenly a knight is well placed on g5. Mm. Also here, bishop e3 looks great. 
Because, yeah, I mean, if black has to play a move like knight e8, then, hmm, okay, maybe knight e8 is quite possible, but this, it already looks awkward. And maybe, maybe you can play, nah, bishop c5 probably doesn't work because of bishop takes c3. But, yeah, now maybe h4, you know, something along these lines. And the black attack will still take some time to come along. Uh, also another move you can think about is go e5, switch gears, suddenly play positionally and play against the weak pawns or the bad pawn structure here of black on the queen side. Exchange queens, all right, then there's no attack going to be uh, there anymore. And if queen a5, okay, just play on the dark squares, maybe even play, um, let's see. What do you want to do here? Yeah, maybe just f4 or rook he1, you know. And this also looks fine. Just better for white, really. All right, so let's keep going. I would take this off on c4. This knight is very strong. Sometimes they even sacrifice knight takes b2, knight takes a3. Knight h5. Queen h4, walking multiple pins, but I calculated I could handle it in my favor. Okay. That's good. Also, you didn't have many, many uh, alternatives, right? Queen g4 was the only other move, but I think that really runs into bishop h6. And now bishop h6 was played. All right, f4, so now important knight takes f4, you can take on h6, of course. And black takes on g5. Yeah, but giving up the dark squared bishop here, even if black gets the pawn on g5. <sighs> Quite risky play by your opponent. H6. And now bishop f6. H takes g5. And now bishop takes d8. All right. Here I would certainly keep the queens on the board if bishop takes g5. Uh, absolutely. I mean, look at the black king. Without the bishop, so weak on the dark squares. Uh, this looks fantastic. Um, if black goes f6, you just play bishop h6. It's just completely crushing. You go g4 here as well, just winning. Well, not winning yet. The knight can still move to uh, g7, but um, this, is just, this is just absolutely horrible. Uh, knight g7, let's say... No, take on c4, play queen g3. This is all weaknesses. The black king is weak, all the pawns are weak. Uh, this is just so bad. All the black pieces, look at that. <laughs> I could make so many red, red squares here because it's just all so bad. Um, and if we re go back here, what else can black do? Queen somewhere. But no, this is just even worse. Just g4, bishop f6, and black can resign, queen h6, and moves like that. It's just game over. So black has to go f6, but then, like I said, just horribly weakened. So definitely keep the queens on the board. I think you just want to make sure you don't lose a pawn here. Just take this back. And also this position is nice for you, but it's not nowhere near as nice as the other position is probably just winning. Uh, this is just better for you, but not winning. Um, so what, what factors to consider when, when thinking about trading queens or not? Well, king safety is huge, right? And in this case, your king is much safer than the black one because black doesn't have this dark square bishop anymore, right? So that's just, that's just huge. King safety is the first thing to consider 
well, or material, right? If you're material down, then you should avoid queen exchange because with queens on the board, you can often create more counterplay, making it more difficult for your opponent. Vice versa, if you're up material, and let's say a lot of material, that makes it easier to go into your end game because you can just convert there. You don't have to worry that much about king attacks, about mating attacks, and it makes it easier, right? So those two factors I would definitely consider when exchanging queens or not. How do I make a sound plan here? After this point, I start drifting, calculating all king all kind of moves but all kind of move by move options but with no idea of a good strategy all right here just i mean i would be just tempted to take this knight off finally because there are just so many advantages to it for one you just destroy the black pawn structure look at these pawns here just a mess all week the bishop is well, not that great right now uh, on the dark squares, you have very nice control here. You control the D file, you can put the bishop on F6. Yeah, and black probably can't even take on G2 here because the knight would be in trouble after bishop G5, threatening rook G1. Or even if you put your bishop on F6, it's just so dominant. So how to make a sound plan here? Well, in general, you want to improve your peace play, you want to grab more space. Those are general considerations, right? And then, of course, always make sure you're not blundering anything. Just improve slowly your pieces. But sometimes it's also concrete, like here, uh, destroying the black pawn structure, um, activating your rook, putting it on d6. But really, positionally speaking, this is just the key point here that suddenly from an intact structure, a7, b5, c6, d6, now we see what is left over. It's just weak pawns, isolated pawns, right? They cannot protect each other. That's important. So they always need the help of other pieces to be protected. Otherwise, you can just collect them. So that's why a coherent pawn structure is so essential, so they can all protect each other. Uh, of course, there's always going to be one pawn which is unprotected, but, um, well, it makes it so much easier to defend the pawns. All right, so you played g3, which is also fine. But now take on c4, it's pretty much the same thing. We just, so, ah, okay, now there's g5, unfortunately. Now there's g5. Uh, so, okay, bishop f6 is fine. Rook f8, ah, now you took, okay. Now you took, well, I guess it also didn't run away. You could still do it later. Uh, and now you did it. Takes, takes, c5. So I don't think you've been drifting much here at all. You put your bishop on a beautiful square. You want a pawn. And now let's see how you continue. Rook f1. Um, okay, I would, I'm not sure where you're going with this rook. I would probably more intuitively put it on d1 here. But okay, f1 also seems fine. And now knight d4. Rook f4, you're going for the mate. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, you could also just grab another pawn. You're just completely winning here, being two pawns up for sure. Uh, but going for the mate also looks very sensible. Um, knight g7. Okay, now you can't finish him off yet, but already this is looking good, right? Okay, rook d7, bishop c6, rook c7, rook e6. After game, we agree bishop takes g7. Bishop takes g7 would be finishing it off. Uh, I really like e5 here, what you did. I really like this move. Why would you give your bishop up like that? Uh, there's no need. I mean, all these positions are winning for you, of course, but there's no need to do so. So e5, I think is good. You uh, protect the bishop. I see the problem now. Knight h5 also gets the bishop. That's true. Um,
But okay, it doesn't matter. Rook takes c4 here. What I was thinking about was rook takes c6 and getting a little fancy here with knight d5, threatening knight e7. Uh, might also be possible. Also, probably very good for white. Yeah, not necessary. Um, rook e7, yeah, just take this pawn. Just take this pawn, you know. Okay, he takes an f6, you take back. Take another pawn, you're up two healthy pawns. Um, and this is just a technical task. So rook e7, rook e8. Okay, takes, takes. But doesn't, yeah, I mean, this is still great. You're up two pawns. Rook f4. Okay. Yeah, maybe just take on c5 here. And now just play knight d5. Yeah, this is easy, right? So the bishop is still still good, but now you play knight d5 and you force the exchange of the bishops. Probably. Um, well, obviously this doesn't work and this doesn't work either for black. Um, but black maybe it can give a check and then move to bishop, but then also you just have a great knight on d5. And yeah, and all these end games, rook f3, you just protect the pawns, nothing is going to happen here. Just push your two connected pass pawn and will be very easy one, okay? But by playing rook f4, you don't give it away either. But this bishop, you see how the bishop is controlling the knight uh, so that's that's the only annoying part in this position, yeah? Okay, rook g4, rook f3, rook g5, the feeling of letting it slip away, very little time on the clock. You haven't made any major errors so far, uh, so it's all good. Rook f2, king d3, takes, takes. This is all still fine to me. Bishop g2, okay, now black's threatening check and taking on this pawn, okay, that might be a problem. Play knight e4, rook b6, yeah, knight e4 looks a very decent move. like this move very much, very much, great move. Rook f3, rook f3 you can just play king e2 now and everything's fine. And uh, if black takes, you just have a winning rook end game. Rook b6 in our internal competition, we get an additional 10 minutes to finish the game after four, move forward. I was still two pawns up, but I couldn't find a good route to conversion. All right. Okay. Let's see what happened here. Rook c8 check. King g7, okay, what is this check doing for you? We, we like to give checks, that's how we are. But here it seems to me you're just helping black to improve the, his king position a little bit. So it doesn't seem to have a lot of benefits. Um, I'll probably go ahead and just push those pawns. Just play b4, this looks like a great move, uh, if I can. Call my almost here, great. You know, you can give this pawn up. And now just play rook c7. Go for the a7 pawn. Maybe threaten knight g5 and get those pawns rolling up the board. That's important here. Pass pawns need to be pushed. That's how it goes. So just push them up the board and you'll be quicker. Black will take so much time still to create any counterplay here with the uh, pawns on the king side, so you'll be much quicker. So rook c8 check, king g7, rook c7, you're going after this a7 pawn. But the problem is you're allowing black to take on b2 and now suddenly you don't have those connected pass pawns anymore. They're huge. They're so strong because they support each other, right? Uh, so that you really want to keep those connected pass pawns. Probably your position is still winning, but it's just not necessary to make it more difficult for you here. So keep those connected pass, pass pawns. Takes takes, rook takes b2. 
c4, rook b3. Yeah, and those rocket games already, they're trickier, right? You're already only one pawn up. So this has become much more difficult, much more difficult than it ever needed to be, obviously. Rook takes g3 and a4. Okay, now it's getting interesting, yeah? Now it's getting interesting. Those rook and games, what do you do? Okay. I would not push the A pawn. And just this is my feeling, okay? This is my feeling. Why wouldn't I push the A pawn? Okay, there are just several considerations here. Um, for one, the A pawn is further away than the C pawn, right? The C pawn is already on the fourth rank, the A pawn still on uh, the third rank. Also, the rook is in the way right now, so you need to move the rook at some point to get the pawn going further. So it will, you will lose another tempo, okay? Another consideration is, in case at some point you're going to queen, you might need the help of the king, and the king is closer to the C pawn than the A pawn, right? Um, so let's just imagine a situation where black sacrificed the rook for the pawn, the C pawn on C8, and then your king is just much quicker to come back from c8 uh, than, let's say, from a8 or a7 and come back into the game, right? So that's just another consideration. Get back to stop the black pawns. Um, so c5 here, or even better, I think, is to go h4. Um, to to force black to take the pawn on h4 when he cannot put a rook behind the c pawn already, right? So black has to spend some more time. So those are the, those little tricks uh, you can use, right? And then now you push. Now you push, and then you can use some other techniques, like something like rook a5 or rook a4 even to threaten rook c4 and things along this, this nature, okay? And um, here you will be quick enough, certainly. Especially because you have the A pawn, right? Uh, this is of course a huge trump in case you ever need to sacrifice your rook then against those pawns here. On the king side, you can still queen this pawn win. All right, A4, rook takes H3. Being too tempy up, it would be still winning, I thought. Yeah, but those endgames, you know, tricky, tricky. Uh, yeah. Because the black rook is in a better position, it's more active. Your rook here, it will still take some time to stop the black pawns, whereas this rook, it's stopping your pawns and also helping to support the own pawns. Okay? So probably c5 still here i would suggest okay let's just see how this goes a5 rook h5 a6 rook a5 yeah now your rook is stuck right your rook is stuck <clears throat> if you move it black takes upon a6 c5 Okay, c6, but now it's a race already. And um, yeah, you never want to get into a situation. Black's going to queen of pawn, uh, the pawn of check. So that's annoying. And um, king e3, rook f5. Now stopping the king from approaching, another very useful technique to know. Um, cut off the white king and you might already be lost. It's sad but true because this rook is just too far away from the action. If you play rook b7, g2, rook b1, there's rook f1 of course and game over. Yeah and also of course very unfortunate that black is queening with check in all these variations. So you tried c7 but now this is the so-called fourth phase of the of the game, 
uh, coined, this term was coined, well, I, I know it from Carsten Müller, a great game expert. Uh, suddenly, there are queens again on the board, but in this phase, if you ever encounter it or maybe get close to it, it's just so important who gives the first check, kind of, right? Who, who gives the first check? Because usually the kings are very open and you can just give a bunch of checks and that's what's going to happen here and then just deliver checkmate, right? So this is really all about king safety, uh, if you ever get to that point. And yeah, black's just checkmating here, like I said, yeah, it's not surprising. Uh, so let's go back. Where could you have still saved it? Um, here, another try could have been to go king g4 right away, to go g5, c5, and now g4, and now bring the rook back. This might be still winning. Now bring the rook back. Not sure if b2 or b1, but probably doesn't matter that much. And you can continue to push those pawns. I mean, this is still, could be still tricky, but my feeling is, should be winning. Should be winning. So, yeah, you, it was all about the placement of the rook. See, by playing a6, you allow black to really put his rook in the perfect spot, controlling your pawn, controlling this pawn as well, and then black just had to push the pawns. So here, could be already very difficult indeed. So that was a great game. I think it was one of the games I could say the most about, where I could point out the most things. And I think really, really instructive game for everybody who's also watching. I think you could get a lot out of it um, on so many levels. Uh, we had positional elements, tactical elements, then the end game element, how to convert a winning position, um, so many different things. And then also how to maybe, yeah, the psychological switch from, well, maybe being winning the whole time and then switching to, okay, I got a self full draw or somehow get my rook back. And yeah, and also till the end stay concentrated, stay aware, and calculate, work, and make sure you, you get that point. Um, because here, I think you, you just thought, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna push my pawns, it will be quick enough. I mean, I have my pawn on a6 already, but it doesn't matter if the black rook is just controlling it from behind, and also the important fact, you don't have those connected past pawns anymore, otherwise, that would be much easier here. All right, so thanks a lot to Kentering for sending that in. 45 minutes analysis. Uh, there was a lot to talk about, but uh, like I said, great, great game to cover here in the show. All right, let's go to the next game. And it is, it was sent in by Marcelino. So let's flip the board. He was playing with the black pieces. And let's go through it. I think it was played here on chess 24 because I can see the time, time use on each move. So he's saying, I watched a series of Marcos Raga on the this, on this Slav. That's great, great series. Let's see three, knight of six, e3, e6, b3. b3 I find unpleasant because I like to take dc. Well, usually in a Slav, I'm not sure what Raga is saying, but usually in those positions, you don't take on c4 and I'll tell you why. Uh, let's just say what plays any other move. You're giving up the center here. Of course, sometimes that's possible and yeah, sure. Uh, except a queen's gambit and also other positions. Um, but in the Slav, maybe later, yeah? But you need to be careful with this move because you give up the center. Right now, white has the center, uh, this pawn on d4. So b3, I think, you shouldn't be too concerned about. Just develop your piece natural, naturally and it will be fine. All right, b6, I mean, this all looks very sensible. 
h6. I'm not sure if you need h6 right now. I think you could just castle. And h6 can be later a useful move, but you might as well stay flexible. And, and what we also said in the last game, uh, play the important, foos, the important moves first, like castle, right? Develop your pieces, all that stuff before you play any more possibly useful pawn moves, but they can also be played later, okay? Castle. And see Eagle saying, I'm lagging. Well, that's not good. To me, it looks fine. Um, well, hopefully only C Eagle is having that problem. All right, so castle C5. Here, I should have better played castle myself. Uh, yeah, once again, comes back to this point. First, play the important moves. and. Also, first develop all your pieces before you take action in center. You want to be best prepared for playing in the center before you take any action. And the bishop needs to go to b7 first. All right, so a couple of people having lag in the chat. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. So maybe it just will disappear. Seagull is saying it, it's, it's okay now. So yeah, just let me keep me updated on that. Otherwise I have to check what's going on there. Um, so back to this, first play the important moves. Castle, play bishop b7, and then you can still go c5. No, no rush really here. Because with not having the pieces uh, well developed, there might be issues, okay? Bishop c2, now you play bishop b7, takes, takes. Okay, a3, slightly too slow, you're thinking. Takes, takes, castle. Yeah, here maybe, maybe rook c8, but castle looks fine to me. I like castle. B4, knight e4. Okay, bishop drops back. Rook c8. Of course, you need to have an eye on queen d4. Um, but it seems right now you could answer that in some way. Uh, maybe e5. That would be interesting. To block the diagonal, then take on c2. Of course, we would need to check something like knight c6 here. Uh, but probably you can just play a move like queen g5, protect against a checkmate. And now a bunch of pieces are hanging for black. So that looks good. All right. So knight d4. Bishop takes h2. Yeah, that's, uh, of course, in a blitz game you can do that. But... Interesting sacrifice, but maybe it just doesn't work. Yeah. So if you want to go for an attack, you could also play a move like queen h4. Or queen g5, something along those lines, uh, which probably forces black uh, white to go back knight f3. Um, because g3 would weaken this diagonal tremendously. So White certainly doesn't want to do that, and h3 is also weakness uh, on this diagonal, uh, which you maybe can't exploit right now, but it looks shaky now, just rook fd8, looks, looks good for black. So bishop takes h2, okay, that's interesting, takes take, and now knight g5, but what are you even threatening here? Uh, doesn't seem to be enough really doesn't seem to be enough. So yeah, sacrifices are fun <laughs> until, well, they just don't work, right? Um, so, doesn't seem to work. I don't even see what you're threatening. 
All right, well, I play queen d3, f5. Now, I'm not playing courageously. Oh, bishop e4 was possible, yeah? So this could have been very interesting. And now, well, that's a different situation. Now there might be some tactics, uh, like rook takes c2, knight takes, and here I could imagine, well, knight f3 at least would uh, give you a perpetual here for queen g5. And queen h5, and now king g3 is now safe, king g2, then queen g4 and bishop takes f3, you are probably better. Um, because white has to give the queen, and here feeling hmm, not not easy, but at least a perpetual. But white can go king g3 when, yeah, this seems to be a draw. Is there anything else? You can also consider moves like bishop f3, but it doesn't work here really. Uh, once again, Maybe, no. Nah. If we want a perpetual, then we should do it the other way, and this doesn't work. 91, for example. Um, no, doesn't seem to be more than a draw here. Unless there's some other trick. Well, there is the move bishop takes g2. Oh, I like this move. And not sure what to think about this. Well, here, white could transpose again to this line where it gives the queen. And not sure, black could be better, but if so, probably not by much. Um, or black, white could play f4. which is interesting and yeah this is all pretty crazy stuff of course which needs to be checked carefully but looks pretty uh, good pretty good for for black queen h2 something like that queen h4 Yeah, it looks pretty good. My feeling is this would be good. So yeah, you want to consider all cannon moves in position, obviously. So bishop e4 looked interesting. Also, white is not threatening anything right now. So you could also play something else. Um, I don't know if you can take on c2 right away with similar ideas, but white can probably just take with the queen. Uh, no, there's no follow-up. This knight on d4 is annoying. It's covering f3. All right, so let's see how this game continued. f5, queen, knight takes f5. Whoa. What is this? <laughs> now the game was suddenly over very quickly, yeah? <laughs> okay, nice finish there. All right, what to take away? In the opening, maybe, just a couple of decisions I criticized a little bit. H6 uh, was not necessary. Just play when it's necessary, when it's really doing something. First do the important moves, castle, play bishop b7, and also c5. Came a little bit early to my mind. Uh, first, be ready before you start your action in the center. And then the sacrifice probably was owed to the fact that this was a blitz game, so you felt like going for some fun, but yeah, before you do such sacrifice, you should be sure you get enough compensation. Sometimes it's helpful to spot at least one line where you get a perpetual, because then you have the safety anchor already. In the worst case, you can always give a perpetual and um, be fine with it. So that's helpful, for example, when calculating very complex sacrifices, um, where you cannot find all the lines to the end, it's just too much. But then if you see one line where you know, okay, at least I have a perpetual safe, then you can go for it and then still figure it out later. All right, let's go to the next game. Thanks to Marcelino82. And this is the game by Stephen Curry, 30. 
and he was playing with the white piece against Grandmaster Isa Moradia Badi. Very strong Grandmaster. I faced myself in the past, so that promises to be a very interesting game. The time control was 90 minutes and 30 seconds increment per move. All right, so let's bring it on. B3 is an interesting way to play against uh, this Sicilian and also what uh, Robin van Kampen covered in his new series, his Sicilian repertoire, his repertoire against the Sicilian part 2 if you want to check it out. And uh, what is Stephen Curry saying? I want to play b3 only after seeing e6 to avoid the e5, d6 pawn structure. Very good, that's a good way to play against it. But my opponent said 2b3 is strong with some king's gambit type f4 break. Yeah, could be true. I know Robin van Kamen recommends b3 in his repertoire series, but what is your opinion on the soundness of these two approaches? Well, there are drawbacks and advantages to both of them. Okay, so if we just cover this real quick, b3 here, yeah, if black now goes d6 and d5, I've actually had this on my board, on the board myself with black, then white has this idea to go f4, and that works out pretty well. But black has other options here. I think uh, Robin says there's now b6 here, no, maybe later b6. But I personally recommend g6 in my series I've recorded in German uh, against the anti Sicilians. And I found this to work pretty well against b3. So this is the advantage that you have right now. Now black wouldn't go g6, right? So yeah, it's just a different situation. Of course, you have less uh, less options because of you have the knight on f3, but on the other hand, black also has less options because he has already committed himself to e6. So knight c6. Bishop b5, queen b6, knight c3. Okay, I'm not familiar with much of the theory here, so I'm just following the moves and going to check your comments. But, you know, I'm wondering if you could first go bishop b2, maybe play bishop b5 later. But, okay. Uh, a6 takes, takes, and a4. I'm trying to use the weakened b6 square and play with a light square pawn chain, which is very common in this b3. Uh, variations, I feel like. Uh, knowing with a pawn bishop on b2, knowing that there will be no knight coming to d4, b4, is this a good idea? I'm weakening my dark squares too much. I think it's fine. Uh, I don't know that much about this variation, but I know certainly that you, that you play on the light squares. Uh, often, even possibly if they move c4, which is not possible here anymore. So if we go back a little bit. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can take on c6, go queen e2. Probably black plays knight f6 now. And. Oh, but even this looks interesting. Now e5, okay. Also looks interesting. I mean, many possible ways to play, and all very interesting. And if black doesn't go knight f6, you can set up with c4, and that would go knight c3 and have a nice grip. Maybe later play d4. Yeah. Quite a possible way to play, absolutely. But this is different, and um, we'll see how this turns out if you were to weaken on the light squares. Um, knight f6, queen e2, bishop e7, castle d6, bishop b2, e5. All right, bishop e6, a5. And a4. Yeah, this is double edged, it feels like. Uh, you're saying fixing queen side, eyeing up the b6 square, but later on becomes a tactical liability. You do like this move or should I be trying for something more like active, more active like knight d2 f4. Yeah, I would like that better, I think. Um, knight d2 here, fold by f4, looks very sensible. Uh, you can think about going knight c4, knight d3, and go for the light squares. I mean, even here, castle, let's say you go knight c4 here, 
black doesn't want to take because you have nice control over d5 and bad black bishop on e7 and maybe b5 though and b4 but here in fact knight d5 even works because you have this tactic queen f3 and you win a piece uh, because black cannot unpin himself um, yeah so knight d2 i like much better also of course this idea f4 i, I fancy the white position i like it so a5 i think is the wrong plan because this b6 square is not doing that much for you and this knight on c3 is already well placed now you don't want to move it to b6 necessarily knight d2 rook a8 okay now you're going for this plan of knight c4 okay yeah Yeah, maybe you could have done just one move earlier and not play a5. Here, I guess f4, black just takes. And probably not too much sack happening in your favor, knight d7. So a5, yeah, doesn't didn't seem like to add any value to your position. Knight d7, knight d3, and now bishop g5. And you're saying, how should I proceed here? I want to place a knight on d5, but f5 seemed like a problem. To play knight cd1, interesting move. And awkward move. Could be a great positional idea, but first of it looks weird. And usually weird moves you want to be careful with. Sometimes they're cool and they work, but sometimes they have some drawbacks. All right, so let's just check this out. Um, knight d5 is saying f5 might be a problem. Yeah, I mean, this is what black wants to do, right? Yeah, feels like a problem to me as well. I mean, you could do something like this. Or you could just, well, not react at all. But the question is, yeah, f3 is a weird move. Uh, but the question is, what do you do next, right? Um, and it's hard to come up with any sensible plan. Where's your play? So, yeah, I don't like it too much. All right, so not cd1. The queen is very well placed on c6, it feels like. Yeah. All right, so let's see what you come, came up with here. My initial idea was to play c4, knight c3, and knight d5. Is this the correct idea in the position? It's interesting, but yeah, not sure. It takes a long time on the other hand. Let's see how it works out. Queen c7. Queen f3. I was worried c4 would be a bad move if black can play f5 and get a piece to d4. But queen f3... The queen seems in the wrong place there, honestly. Let, let's say c4. I mean, let's, let's follow this plan. Or you could also play knight c3 back here. Let's follow this plan. C4, probably black is going to go G6. Because if F5, you just take it off, right? And this is this is great play on the on the light squares for you. And um, if G6, no, you go not C3. Okay, black probably takes this one off. Okay, you take back with the pawn, sure. You go knight d5 next, and it looks fine to me. I, I think you could have just pulled through with your plan. Looks interesting. I guess you were afraid of maybe in this maneuver knight b8 here. But even even here, I mean, black has a choice, right? Either he takes on e3, you take back the f pawn, you never have a problem with the d4 square, or black allows this knight to come to d5. 
And yeah, black can allow that, but now you also have something going for you. Seems fine. Seems fine. Maybe queen of three now. I mean, still complex, obviously. Still very much complex. Uh, and also a5 might be hanging. Uh, maybe you have to play something like that. Maybe knight e4 is annoying here. But yeah, maybe if you just move out of the way, prepare b4, something along these lines. Interesting, interesting. But queen f3 just feels wrong because the queen, uh, it's going to be in the f-file later, right? So just this displacement rook against queen, I'll be careful with. All right, g6, knight f5, all right? I want to play for h4 and prevent black's f5. I missed the following uh, continuation where I drop a pawn, but I thought I still have good compensation. Yeah, knight f5, it seems there's no coherent strategy to your moves, right? You play knight cd1, you have this plan of c4, but now that knight is just on d1 for right now, um, that's problematic. So knight f5, now you have to kind of play for tactical solutions. f6, and now knight fe3 keeps the balance, but had more aggressive intentions. All right, certainly interesting play here with h4 uh, and so on. The drops to a5 pawn, <laughs> which is funny, because the bishop coming from g5 to a5 just seems so unlikely, but here, this is what happens. But in general, this phase of the game obviously didn't go right for you. you. You're switching plans all the time. It feels like you're maybe too responsive to what your opponent is doing, which is, can be great, prophylactically speaking, can be a good idea. But I think you could have just stick to this plan of c4 and then retreating to c3 and go knight d5. All right, bishop d2, knight e3, bishop takes a5, queen g3. Yeah, you have some compensation because the bishop on a5 is awkward right now and the black pawn structure is loosened up a little bit. But then you also have the awkward knight on d1. Bishop d2 back. Ah, oh, yeah, the bishop comes back. That's smart. f4. e takes f4. How do I decide how to recapture? The queen seemed better with the idea of playing to f2 next, but the rook would have been more accurate. The knight on d1, uh, it's just unfortunate. Yeah, um, let's see, you play queen takes f4. Okay, rook takes f4 is, you're saying, more accurate, I guess, is, is the computer evaluation. Um, and queen, now you still have this idea of queen f2 next, and still kicking the rook, uh, the, the bishop out, and if, Let's just make some moves. I don't know, knight e5, queen f2, and now, well, if black needs to take on e3, suddenly this, you untangle yourself, you can play rook f1 next, and all looks nice again, right? With this battery on the f file. So, that would be a more harmonious setup. Of course, rook takes f4. Yeah. You just want to make sure that black cannot do anything concretely while your pieces are so awkward, but maybe he can't and then just fall with queen f2 and if the bishop retreats to a5 you're happy too because the bishop is out of the out of the game and if, if black takes on e3 then you can untangle all right takes knight e5 queen f2 okay bishop drops back and now knight c3 and just yeah just in your mind compare this position this could be the exact same position with your rook on f4 already right Instead of f1, then you could just triple up on the f-file and put some pressure on this weak pawn on f6. That's the difference. Okay. Queen g7, queen f4, rook f7, knight c4. I think this is a serious error. What should else should I be doing in this position? 
bishop takes c4. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're allowing black to get f5 in, but maybe it's getting, he's getting that in already anyways. Yeah, I mean, you're pawn down. Uh, you don't have much compensation here. Not easy to suggest much, maybe. I mean, in general, it, it's helpful to see what your opponent is up to next. Does your opponent want to go f5 next? Or what is his plan? Why did he just play rook f7? Does he want to double on the e-file, maybe double on the f-file? Um, so that's important to keep in mind. So you could play somewhere rook f2. And also double or triple rather on the f-file. Uh, then the question will be, is f5 already an option? That might it well be an option already. But okay, you could take, and go back to g3, something like that. And will be still some work for, for, for black because this bishop is strong. And uh, not easy to convert that extra pawn. The problem with knight c4 is that you give black this, this huge trump in the end game well, if an endgame arises, black always has this pawn on a6, uh, this pass pawn. So that's huge. That's a huge factor. Uh, all the endgames are suddenly very good for black. So yeah, just stay quiet. Do the best you can to prevent the, your opponent's plans. Make it as difficult as possible. Always hint at counterplay. Create threats. Just make the life you, of your opponent as difficult as possible. You know what I've been wondering though, if there was the chance to go h5, if that makes any sense here uh, in this situation, instead of going f4. Now black doesn't want to go g5, uh, probably just want to go king g7. And now I was just wondering if this is helping you and um, in your further play. Could be, I mean it could be. I mean, even if you look like lines at lines like knight f5 check now. This is interesting, yeah? Now g5, I guess, uh, is necessary. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you play c4 now. Maybe you just have the strategy again to play on the light squares. Queen, queen f3, controlling this. Queen e2, kicking the bishop out. This is interesting. I like h5. Not sure if anything is wrong with it. Um, I mean, sure, black could take on e3. Knight takes and, and now play king g7 or g5. No, I g5 I don't like for black. Queen f3, playing on the light squares, putting knight on f5 looks like good compensation for you. But king g7. Yeah, but even if you go f4 now, right? I mean, just looks like a major improvement to what we had seen earlier. Major improvement. So h5, not sure what you didn't like about this move, because I'm sure you considered it. But h6, g6 is the threat. So king h8 maybe? Takes and rook g8. Not sure what to think of this. Yeah, maybe this is a good good way for black to play. This bishop on d2 is annoying still. But yeah, you could you could do something like this. It's just now this bishop is so annoying. But maybe you have your own chance here. You go f4, you threaten f5, if uh, black takes, you, you threaten f6 suddenly. This is interesting and this is what I'm talking about. Make it as difficult for your opponent as possible. So that's just, I was just curious about that. Because mm, if we go back here now, yeah, h5 isn't doing much anymore. Black can, has the queen already on g7. All right, let's see the game. Takes, takes, f5. 
king h1. I didn't want to open the g file against my king, but is this something to worry about and to be worried about? I don't think I don't think uh, black want to take back with the g pawn here. Yeah, I think black was taking back with the rook. Because taking back with the g pawn is also having its drawbacks. The king is weaker, the black king is weaker, the f5 pawn is weak. It's just position speaking, it's not a nice move to play. Um, because your pawns are isolated and just many drawbacks. Um, so. I think black want to go rook takes f5, certainly. So yeah, king h1 then doesn't do much, I would say. But okay, it doesn't hurt either. Uh, so let's see, king h1, rook e6, queen g3, f takes e4, time pressure kicks in here, but I think my position is hard to play anyways. Yeah, I mean d4, now we just lost. Um, queen g3 seems like an error. Yeah, just, I don't know, something like rook a1. Make it as difficult for your opponent as possible. You could also take on f5. Okay, maybe black really now would like to take back to have rook g6 or rook h6 ideas. But you could play rook a1. And then see what black's up to. So, you know, black can take on e4, you take back. And black still has to convert it. It's not that easy. This bishop is strong, but after queen g3, f takes e4. D4, now this all fall, falls apart. I mean, you have lost another pawn. This is just horrible now, of course. I don't have to tell you that. So the rest was probably, yeah, fairly simple for, for black. Yeah. Um, so queen G3, it seems you kind of gave up there. You. Well, I don't know. I don't know what your uh, concern or what you're thinking when you play this move. Um, maybe I'm missing that something now because we are almost one and a half hours in. I'm not as fresh anymore. Um, but yeah, don't don't make it easy for your opponent. Be as resilient as possible. Always ask questions, uh, pose problems, create threats, and so on and so forth. And don't make it easy for your opponent, right? So, and time pressure, okay, that happens. Um, and yeah, your position is hard to play, sure. You're a pawn down without much of compensation except for the bishop. So, yeah, it is not easy. It is certainly not easy. <clears throat> All right, very interesting game. Thanks for sending it in. Very uh, <laughs> interesting position ideas, and you got a full game here uh, against the strong grandmaster. While you didn't have any great winning chance, obviously, uh, it was a interesting battle, and um, I think it could have posed some more problems. With, for example, h5, looked really like the way to go to have some good compensation for the pawn. And yeah, earlier there was this phase where it felt like you didn't really um, have a plan or this knight cd1. I already said it was awkward and the knight was awkward there for a long time. I don't know, th those were critical moments, it feels like. So if you analyze better there, but I think the opening phase went fine for you. Uh, this a5 move, like you criticized yourself, wasn't that helpful, uh, didn't do much really. 
Because okay, you stop B5, but I don't think Black wants to do it anyway necessarily. No, Black isn't isn't going B5 because it doesn't help him. So yeah, interesting game. Thanks for sending it in. I hope this analysis was helpful for you. All right, we have seven minutes to go. Let's see how how long this next game is. 53 moves by Blitz Daily. I think that's too long and a lot of text too, which is great. I love that. I love all the comments, uh, but I cannot cover it right now. This is just too much. And Blue Car sent in a game, but I'm actually seeing it right now. It was not sent in through the analysis tool, so I can't cover it. So let me just see if, there, if I have any quick game available that I can cover in 10 minutes or so. Sometimes that's possible, but maybe sometimes not. So we'll see in just a moment uh, what I have here. All right, let me see. All right, and Stephen Curry, you're very welcome. I wasn't even aware that you're watching. Uh, you could have said something or maybe, yeah, I don't know, throw in some more comments. And MGTOW, we are analyzing without the engine in this show because, I mean, everybody can use the engine, right? So, uh, yeah, of course, it's, it's it's good to know what is right and what is wrong, which moves are good and bad. But for now, I just want to have a like clean look without any influence by the engine, um, just from my perspective. Uh, I'm sure there are many mistakes in my analysis because I'm doing it ad hoc, uh, not thinking too much about it, but um, just following my feelings, my intuition, and just putting my thoughts. Junior chess team, if you're listening, I can't click on your game. Um, so that doesn't work, or it shows me an error. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. So who else do we have? K Storm. Let's see how long the game is of. K Storm can't say any moves either, guys. Something is not going right there. Meftif, let's see what Meftif sent in. Ah, 58 moves, that's too long, unfortunately. Gotta do this another time next week. And also for all of those wondering why I'm having my show today, I can't do tomorrow, so I was like, instead of canceling, I, I want to do another show. It's, it's a lot of fun for me as well. So I decided to just spontaneously do it on First day, do today. Uh. All right, high key, high key one, two. Don Martin, Don Martin, yeah, I'm seeing your, your message, but I'm going chronologically. But maybe I'll get to you again. We'll see. We'll see. What? How long is the hikey game? 60 moves. All these people are sending in their longest games, which is smart because then I have much more to talk about and will be a long analysis. But can't cover it now because I want to uh, finish up at some point too. All right. See Simon Schach. <laughs> Another fifty eight minute game. All right. Okay. All right. Don Martin, we'll do your game then. It's thirty three moves, but I'll be a little bit quicker. I hope that's fine with you. Uh, because yeah, I don't wanna go over too long. And, um, but let's do this one. 
let's do this one, Don Martin. And uh, it's also great if, of course, the people who host games I'm analyzing are in the show uh, and, and watch live so you can also well chat or say anything about what I'm saying. So Don Martin, I just started playing chess in Club Love in 2015. Dude, to first your YouTube channel and later on, later on this website. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear. Um, after my first season, I got my first uh, German rating, uh, David said, 1483. That's pretty good for the, after the first season. Joined a local five round tournament. In the first round, I met an opponent with nearly 500 uh, rating points more who had over 2,200 ELO in his younger days. So yeah, those are great games. Facing stronger opponents, you can learn a lot. All right, so what do we have here? What is this variation? I know. Uh, it's a weird line. I don't even know the name. Okay, d5, I like to play close and complicated positions. Yeah, I guess knight f3 is another move here, but I'm really not familiar with this line. Bishop e7, e4, okay. This more looks like a familiar structure. King h8, I was surprised that, about that move. I thought he will surely play rook g8 and prepare a king set attack. So I decided to castle to a queen side. Uh, I don't think he'll go rook g8. I think what his plan is here is to go knight g8 followed by f5. All right, can I make moves? Oh. Black just hasn't made a move, that's why. Okay, um, so you can just develop naturally here, knight f3. Rook g8, g5, you know, that that just doesn't work uh, in general. This is not seen at all, really, this kind of idea. Um, no, black wants to go knight g8 and f5. This is kind of a standard way to play, but very slow and looks like a strange opening choice by your opponent. I mean, I don't know what else. I mean, the knight could also go somewhere else, maybe to h5. No, but knight h5 doesn't work because of, excuse me, because the knight takes e5, very common tactic. Um, knight e8 would be another way, but I'm guessing knight g8. Otherwise, I can also not explain this move king h8, but rook g8, if your opponent does that, you know, here, here first needs to play g5, but this is all... It's also weakening the square on an f5 considerably and to get to an attack here will take forever, it will be very difficult in the meantime. You can play on the king side and this is not something I've really seen much at all. Alright, so bishop e3, knight bd7, queen d2, he, and knight f3, he really he is going for his rook g8. This is, this is very curious. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen this before in this kind of pawn string. I've seen it, this idea in other openings like the Roy Lopez sometimes there, but here, no. And Okay, queen d2, h6. Yeah, stopping that g4, I like that. Keep the bishops and especially bishop on e3, that's a huge asset, a6. And now you go g4 yourself. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Knight h7. Here I think you could also just... Well, okay, I, I think castle is fine. Um, knight f8 now. Yeah, start your attack. Rook dg1 looks great. Knight g6. Okay. All right, so this is going to be a very, uh, it's going to be sharp, yeah, knight g6. Black wants to uh, have this dark squared uh, blockade and you you sacrifice a pawn, saying you learned from Anna Rudolph's lessons to open up fights against the opponent's king. Yeah, you just got to make sure you get enough in return. Uh, but in general, a good idea. Um, and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, let me just, I want to go a little bit slower here. Or maybe already here. Maybe already here you can just go h4. And if black plays knight df8 now, 
you can just go g5. And of course, black cannot take, you would open up the h file. And now there's not even a question if you need to sacrifice a pawn. Um, so probably black needs to play h5, cannot allow any, yeah, can't allow you to open up files. And now you could castle and then play something like knight e1, knight d3, f4, and this knight is horrible, you have a lot of space. It's great, this is just great. So maybe it would have been smart to postpone castle for one of them and go for h4 immediately. And I'm sorry to hear that it's lagging right now. Um, I hope it goes away, but you're right, you can also watch this analysis later. Okay, because here now suddenly it's not as easy anymore. In h4, the, bishop, the pawn would ha be hanging on g4, yeah. Okay, but let's see what you did here. Maybe this is also just fine. Now g5, very interesting. Takes, takes, takes. And now you sacrifice the exchange on h7. Yeah, this just this just doesn't work. What can I tell you? I mean, here, after this sequence, you just lost. Um, uh, there's just nothing to do anymore, I think. Uh, I don't even know if we need to cover the next moves. Um, let's just go quickly through them, and then I'll get back to a cool moment. Now you play d6 to get the knight into the game. But you, you have to consider, you don't even have that many pieces anymore. Um, but it really doesn't matter here, you just lost. Uh, so, yeah, you can try d6. But this is a pretty straightforward defensive task for your opponent, which he handled, seems to me, pretty fairly easily. Okay, and just no attacking potential left. All right. Um, all right, so you, here, this is a critical part. Out of a sudden, I thought I could open up the king completely. Isn't there a mating chance? And I played much too fast. Yeah, I assume there was a local five from tournament, so with normal time control, so no blitz or rapid. So take your time. You have time, especially when it comes to attacks and calculating variations. You want to take your time. You want to take your time and make sure before you give material that you really get enough out of it. And uh, you know, this is way too ambitious, honestly. Um, even if your opponent plays something like rook f8, you just don't have that many pieces in the game. Those pieces are not participating in the attack, the knight and the bishop. They cannot enter the attack. The knight is far away, the bishop has no roots to get to the black king. You just have a rook and a queen. It's just not sufficient. Um, so this is something that you need to consider. How many attacking pieces do I actually have? Even here after rook takes g5, g6, not sure about your compensation. Um, but this would be a completely different story. You just have sacrificed one pawn. It's not that much of an investment. Maybe you can go f4 here. And uh, you can try to open up the position further, and I could imagine you have, you have some nice compensation. Yeah, I actually do like this. I do like this. F4. What does Black do? <clears throat> Maybe King G7 now. Uh, to threaten Knight takes G5. But okay, you just retreat to g2, so you can also have this option to double on the on the um, h file. You threaten to play f5 or f takes e5, followed by queen h6. Um, honestly, this looks great. Honestly, this looks really good. I don't even know what to what to give you for black takes, queen takes. Um, G5 can't be right, queen h6 is a threat. 
Rook h8, no, and all those moves are terrible. And I think probably you did everything right. You followed this this principle by uh, that you learned on a rule of show, uh, opening files against the king. If you take the rook here, you threaten rook dh5, g6 is forced. Um, you play f4 here and you, you open up more files. You try to get in more pieces and um, Black is still behind the development. The bishop and the rook are still in there, not participating in the defense. So this is looking great. Let me see if I can come up with any sensible moves for, for Black. Maybe Queen F6? Queen F6. But yeah, just take on E5. I want to go rook g2 here and threaten rook dh2, which I thought was a really good idea. But there's a defensive mechanism here for, for black, which you can definitely remember in your own games. To alleviate pressure, just exchange queens. Uh, it is still interesting um, because there's rook dh2 and this pin. Um, but not sure if you have enough here. But this is, again, interesting, right? And you haven't given too much. You're just a pawn down. You can think about e5, bringing in knight e4, knight g5, knight f6 ideas, but black can go bishop f5 here. But another interesting moment uh, is d6. Same idea, knight e5, and I think here black's in huge trouble because of this threat knight f6. Um, probably only moves king g8, but... This looks like white well, might win already material. I don't know how yet. Ah, knight of six, still knight of six. This is nice. Uh, and black cannot take because of checkmate. I, I, did, I didn't want to do this because this is not clear. Black's playing f6, covering g5, and the knight is trapped. But knight of six still. And now king of eight is forced, and now you can just pick it up, retreat to g5, and win. So after d6, knight d5 is a threat. Okay, black can play bishop e6. Um, but maybe now e5. Now you have both those ideas, knight e4 and knight d5. Black cannot stop both. You know, this is how it can develop suddenly. And you might be close to winning here. Uh, or you at least have very good chances. Um, you're saying, those are the moments you make the move and want to take them back immediately. Yeah, we've all been there. This is why it's so careful to take your time to really make sure you're not um, overlooking anything, any tactics, or really make sure you've seen all your opponent's resources. All right, so this is, yeah, I mean, even f5 here, just locking that up, looks great. Looks great. And long-term compensation with play on the open files. But the lines we just saw also looked very tempting. Um, even if you play another slow move here, let's say king... Well, king b1 would still run into queen f4 though. Um, I don't know if you could play something else and avoid this queen trade. But what we just saw was really good for you. It seems like this idea, is, this idea of d6 I quite liked for, for white. And in general, defending is also quite a difficult task, right? For one, psychologically speaking, to be in the defensive mode and uh, being attacked is not pleasant. And then also, practically, you sometimes need to play only moves to stay in the game. So many options to go wrong. But at the same time, of course, an attack also needs to be executed uh, carefully. And f4 seems to me really a good move to open up files and uh, get to the Black King. All right, that will be it. Uh, what else can I say about this game? 
Yeah, I think in the opening you did everything right. I mean, there was just this remark where I said maybe you could have postponed Castle um, and play H4 immediately. That's something you just need to consider. What is my opponent up to? But th the way it worked out here was also absolutely fine, right? Uh, just then this hastened or hurried, maybe I should say, sacrifice that just didn't work. Yeah, all right. I hope that was helpful and thanks for sending it in. And I'm really um, happy to, to hear that you've come to chess through myself and also at Chess24, that's just awesome. Okay, so that complete con Includes the session. That was probably the longest one I've ever done. Um, thanks for all of you watching. I hope you got something out of it. You got some.